Good morning. I'm Pastor Amanda, and I am delighted to welcome you in this morning on October 1st, starting into that fall. And I think God has heard my pleading, and we're going to have some cooler temperatures this week. And so those of you who like the cool with me will celebrate. Those of you who really like the heat will mourn. You know, we just kind of we balance each other out. Uh, but I am so grateful that we can be God's people gathered together right here and also together in spirit with those of you who are worshiping online. So grateful for the opportunity to draw together in the spirit of God. I do have just a couple announcements. Uh, one, and I think you've seen it scrolling through on the announcement slides, the fellowship lunch that we were going to have on Tuesday has been canceled. Our kitchen crew has been uh, particularly busy with funeral meals, and so to give their feet and backs a break, we're just going to cancel that meal. But I do want to give a plug for the November meal, it's going to be on the second Tuesday, the 14th of November, and we have started, we had um, the Keys, who were missionaries, they retired, and we picked up a new missionary over uh, in Africa, and his first name is Temba, and he's going to be itinerating here for a week in the IGRC for the first time, and we get to have him as our guest on that day for that luncheon. So it'll be the fellowship luncheon, but also a program. And so do maybe put that on your mental calendar when the sign-up sheet comes around for November, because I think that'll be a really great time to meet one of our missionaries that we support monthly. Also, just want to always draw your attention in general to the bulletin insert. Now, the fellowship luncheon is listed in here because Claire already had it printed before we made our, our decision. But the other things, just take note of those upcoming events. And that is to, to all of our good. Let me see. I don't think there are any other like particular things I need to address there. Uh, always love for you to sign in on the Connect card, especially if you have anything we need to be praying about. And today is a beautiful full service. Uh, for those of you who weren't aware, I'm going to be giving the State of the Church address in that place where I normally preach, and I look forward to bringing that word for us, for those of us who are here and those who will be hearing it a little bit later due to some travels and such this weekend. And then after service, the Sunday school classes have provided refreshments, and are, so we're just going to have an extended time of fellowship and refreshment out here in Wesley Hall after worship is done. So hopefully you can mix and mingle a bit before you need to head elsewhere today. So now, let us draw nearer into the presence of God through our prelude.
Good morning. Good morning. If you would please stand as you are able and join me in a call to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. We come to worship God who loves us. When the Israelites grumbled and quarreled when there was no water to drink, God miraculously produced water to show them God's faithfulness and love. When we question and accuse God, God responds by showing us love. When the chief priests and elders questioned Jesus' authority, Jesus answered them with a story about the righteousness of doing God's will instead of paying lip service to God's will. By answering our quarreling and questioning with love, God teaches us how to love God, neighbor, self, and all creation. And when we love as God loves, we respond to testing and accusing by loving God and loving others. Come, now is the time to worship. Please remain standing for the hymn of praise, Praise to the Lord Almighty, number 139 in the Red Hymnal. if we would uh, join in reciting the Apostles' Creed. It's number 882 in your red hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, 
died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to love the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
felt like I needed a moment to absorb the beauty of that piece of music. As we continue worshiping, it is that pastoral prayer time. We will take a few moments in the quiet so that you can lift up whatever is on your heart, on your mind, in your spirit today. Let us pray. Lord, as we are in your presence, as we come particularly to just lift up some people and some situations where we would love for an extra measure of your spirit to be present, we are mindful of your goodness, of your never-ending love, that you are abundant and generous, that there is enough. There is enough of you, there is enough of everything if we handle it well and good ourselves. Lord, I pray this day for those who are enjoying and celebrating good things. I pray this day for those who are mourning great loss. I pray today for those who are just putting one foot in front of the other to stay just where they are. And Lord, I ask for your great mercy to flow among us richly as your church, that we might truly be a body that gives you a good reputation. And one of our offerings to make that a reality is the way we offer the Lord's Prayer together. So now let us pray in the way Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, now I would love for the kiddos to come up and join me for the children's message. Of course. You don't think I'd bring a bag of snacks and not share, do you? ornery. Oh, I am so glad. You know, I love Smarties too. Guess what? I have a secret. You have a secret? Well, I have a microphone, so be careful. <laughs> you have a special friend? Okay, well, shh. It's your cousin. Okay, well, all of you, can you keep a secret? <laughs> Almost. Can I tell you about my Smarties? Uh -huh. So the thing is, I love Smarties. I and especially at Halloween season, you know, they put out these nice big bags of Smarties. And so my husband, Brian, and he is always sitting up there at the sound booth. Brian, can you stand and wave to the kiddos? That's Brian. We love Brian. And so he bought me this big bag of Smarties. Now, do you think that Pastor Amanda needs to eat this big bag of sugar laced no, with citric no, acid no, by herself? No, no. no I, I probably would get a tummy ache if I ate these all by myself, right? They look like buttons you could push, don't they? And so I thought, since out of love, my husband bought me something that I love so much, that out of my love for you, what do you think I'm going to do? Share. I am going to share. That is exactly right. You can absolutely have one for your cousin as well. All right, so I am here to share with you out of my abundance. All right, we're going to catch. Excellent. That was actually pretty good. Whoop! Right there. I, Foster, I'm not done.
Now, for those of you who think that's just foster, how many of us take the bit that God gives us and just go away and do our thing? I'm just saying. There might be a bigger lesson in there than I intended this morning. All right, are we passing along? Awesome, because my arms are only so long. Every, you got yours, Callie? Everybody, and Leah got one. Excellent. Wait, I Claire Bear won't really see where that. You know what? I'll check in with Claire Bear a little bit later, okay? And I can give it to her. <laughs> and it's going to be like double snacks today because there's communion. So I did the right thing today. All right. Well, I just want you to know that I love you and that when I'm blessed and when I happen to have somebody give me something in love, I love to share it with you. And maybe when you guys get stuff, you'd like to share it with others, right? Yeah. I mean, not every single time is there enough to share, but when you have enough, it's good to share. Let's pray. God, you are so good. And I believe we are a bunch of smarties here because we have come together as community to worship you and to love one another. God, help us to do that really well when we're gathered here and everywhere else that we just live our lives. And please bless all of these children that it may go well for them, that there may be plenty of folks who share with them, and that when they have the chance to share, they may have that same heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, you can head back to your grown-ups now. The Bibles are happening a little later in the service. You don't care for Smarties? Okay. That's... Every, every Sunday, Mom, every Sunday. That's his special exit. It's okay. Oh, d- did you hit your head this time? Yeah, see, maybe you got too tall. Yeah, it's a bummer to grow up sometimes. Well, as we continue in this time of exalting the Lord, I would love for us to stand as we are able and sing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Open my eyes that I join me in our offering prayer. Holy God of infinite patience and grace, we bring our offerings today knowing that our actions too often 
don't live up to our intentions and aspirations. When calling ourselves Christians, we announce ourselves as followers of Christ, knowing how many times our choices have made us unrecognizable as his disciples. Yet, you wait patiently for us to find our way back to the path. May our giving this day and our living reflect our desire to be on the path that would be recognized as faithful to the Savior, in whose blessed name we pray. Amen. You're welcome.
I did choose a brief scripture reading uh, for leading us into the State of the Church address. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Probably not one of the memory verses you grew up with or anything. It says, Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. I'm your herald today. I have sought God, and the state of the church address that I have prepared is intended to be uh, really in consultation with the Lord and also my vision as your pastor as I have gotten to know the congregation. Oh, I forgot my usual. So in response to Habakkuk, the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. I was just so excited to get going. So the state of the church. First, let me define what I'm meaning by the church this morning. The church is the gathered people who have a desire to live in the way of God as expressed through Christ Jesus our Lord and the ongoing presence of the Holy Spirit. This local church body does happen to own a building, some additional ground we use for parking lots and a parsonage where my family and I live. But the church is not the building. Now, for those of you who hoped I'd have drawings, schematics, and detailed plans for the future building changes that we are currently dreaming about, please take a moment to be a smidge disappointed and then go ahead and bring your attention back to the body of Christ assembled here in the room and wherever your worship room is online to hear a word that comes out of my mouth, but I sure hope really is from the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean I don't want you to know about the potential future building plans. It's just that the information that is available to you about the future at first, the best information, was the letter written by Dwayne McCoskey that came to you via email or U.S depending on how you receive your monthly newsletter. If you have not seen that letter about where we are in that project, then please do check with the church office so that you can have all that really good information. What I want to emphasize is that right now we are dreaming. But the dream at its core is not the actual building improvements. The building project that we do anticipate is simply a vehicle for living out the real dream. And the real dream is being a good neighbor right here in our downtown Decatur community. The church decided to be committed to this downtown community, what, around the year 2000, when you did a big remodel. That decision was made, and so we're staying but we do have some realities that we're going to take care of. Again, Dwayne's letter covered those things. The dream does include unloading some of our financial drain and obstacles to ministry by tearing down the education wing. Friends, it's crumbling. You can contact Ralph Henkel, our trustees chair, if you have questions about that. Ralph, raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. I didn't have Dwayne raise his hand. He was up here doing liturgy and stuff, and he'll be up for communion. So if you haven't figured out Dwayne yet, uh, I, I think you shall. The dream is to have a facility to the west into which we can invite our neighbors in a place that is, now these are some really spiritual words, up to code. <laughs> do I know exactly what we will do inside such a facility? I don't for sure yet. Jennifer Horton Motter, who couldn't be here today, uh, does have a dream of having children in our community come in in a way that helps them catch up on basics for their, for their academic journey. I believe that there will be a place where we invite persons of all generations to come and do learning and build community. But no matter what we do in that space, I absolutely believe that Decatur First United Methodist Church is a church that has ways yet to be dreamed and implemented to use such a space to the glory of God and to the good of our neighbors. 
But if we are going to move into a long-term, vital future that, and I say this lovingly, that a number of you will not live to see because we are talking, we're building a future for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. There are a couple of things that the people of right now are going to need to do. And I hope you've figured out in these last couple of years that I just am a pretty straight shooter. We're going to need to pray for it, and we're going to need to pay for it. And when I say pray for it, I mean it. I mean come before God with humility and open hearts and open minds, letting go, letting sit what we are already comfortable with or what we already know how to do. I will tell you something about having been to seminary and been in ministry for 20 years. They taught us nothing about a pandemic. They taught us nothing about live streaming. They taught us nothing about learning on the job. They taught us nothing about a whole lot of things that I am figuring out as I go. But I think that that's why God called a farmer's daughter because on the farm, when something breaks, you pick up the pieces and you fix it, or you ask for help when you're just beyond your skills. And so we are a church poised well for the future because we are going to figure it out. I think that's the big word I would have as the state of the church is that we are ready. We are ready and very capable to do new things. But it really is going to take a deep, prayerful attempt. We're really going to, as a whole body, need to ask God what God needs from us in our individual stage of life and such for the next leg of the journey. And again, I'm going to keep being honest that one of the things I need from you all as a 45-year-old pastor, and I know to some of you that still makes me seem like a baby person, but a 45-year-old pastor with 20 years experience is the absolute maximum experience for age you are going to get because I went right from high school to college to seminary to appointment. So I just want to let you know you are getting the most bang for your buck <laughs> in your appointed clergy. But I really need from you is your trust at, in the appropriate role as your leader to prayerfully and competently discover what the future will become, again, within my appointed role as your directing pastor. And we need to be intentional about letting the younger members, and I will define that by saying like 60 and under, have significant input in our future, even if they are not in a life stage where they are available to take the voting council leadership positions all the time. Does that make sense? I know. Like, so I'm in um, charge conference season, and if I let everyone over the age of 80 stop serving, I would lose a number of my participants. If I let everyone over the age of 70 stop serving, I think there'd be four or five of us left. Those are just, and I didn't sit and look at all the names to be straight up statistics, but friends, that means we are a church with a lot of wisdom and a lot of experience and a lot of faith and a lot of hope and a lot of knowledge. So I don't say that to be ageist or something, but I suspect that some of you have hit a place in your life where you would love to step down from the extra meetings and the, the extra stuff in some capacity, but our younger folks are not in the place where they can yet take on some of that. So I'm just really going to need a lot of conversations and community building so that we all discern together. I'm just the one kind of seeing the big picture, really discern and move forward together so that we build that church that is beautiful and stable long into the future. And I'm being this specific, because just where I am in ministry, I want to let you know, and no woe is me stuff here, but I almost left ministry entirely a few years ago. Ministry is tough. Life is tough. The pandemic, as much as I do not like to mention it, friends, it was tough. But then God brought me 
specifically here through the imperfect mechanism of the United Methodist itineracy system. And I believe with my heart, mind, soul, and strength that God brought me here to you and you to be my church for God's own glory and God's own good. Now, I am not standing up here, you know, trying to ask anybody for a blank check or blind trust, though if you happen to have either, come, or, you know, well, the first, never want blind trust, but I, I just really want you to ask great questions. I love answering questions. Sometimes I'll have to think on them a while, but I love getting questions because they help me grow and to think better as your pastor and as a person. I also want you to share with me your honest concerns. One caveat, I want you to check in with God and search your soul about why it is you have these particular questions and concerns so that you can come with your heart in tune with God so that we can have a great conversation, hopefully, when, when we have those conversations about building together the future at first. I want us all to have our heart, mind, soul, and strength involved before we get too caught up in the details of the physical plans and that stuff. Now, for those of you who are concerned that there might be secrets or that something could happen without you knowing, I want you to know one specific parameter. Part of our process as United Methodists is that if we are going to spend over 10% of our annual operating budget, there has to be a church vote. So we can raise and gather as much money as we want without anybody's permission. You know, it's like, well, if somebody's depositing money, that's never a problem, right? But before we go and spend a big chunk of money, there will be an all-church conference to vote on that. So just in case anybody is nervous about, oh my gosh, could something happen without me knowing, as long as you are getting the church correspondence, I promise that when we actually have plans in place, you will know. You will know. And so I just don't want anybody to be nervous about that because when you're not in the everyday dealings, you know, if you're not in the church office or maybe if you're not in a small group as regularly as you used to be or something, you might feel like you're not getting as much information as you want. But please let me let you be assured that it is our goal to be really good communicators. Just right now, we're still dreaming. So... There's no need to even deal with buildings and such if we aren't first and foremost, foremost focused on our mission. So that's what I want to talk about next. We are making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That's the mandate in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, make disciples. And we are intentional about doing that here and now. That's really a bragging point. It has not always been that way in the past. And I'm not here to hurt anyone's feelings, but I have heard from people who uh, are close to my age who have said, point blank, that coming to church for just all the fun stuff, and not just at this local church, but there was a fad, you know, in kind of the 90s and such of making everything fun, that fun stuff doesn't actually disciple anybody. So church, our mandate is not to make things fun for children and youth. There's plenty of fun in the world. I'm not saying children and youth shouldn't have fun. In fact, you know I love a good laugh. But we don't have the resources and time and energy. There's too much on the line for us to spend a bunch of our time planning fun. Our mandate is also not to compete with busy schedules. Let's get that collective complaint out now. Oh, there's sports on the weekends. Oh, the schools don't cake Wednesdays off for ministry. Oh, you have any more? Go ahead, get it out. Oh, because the thing is, I have no time and energy nor magic potion to fight the world. But I know what to do with folk when they show up. I know how to make disciples of Jesus Christ to transform the world. And here at this church, we do too. And that is our mandate. Our mandate is to make disciples of the ones who are here in a way that meets them with lots of love and care and also age-appropriate study and instruction. For too long, it seems, and this is anecdotal for me since I've only been here a couple of years, but it seems that the church has operated 
noticing and lamenting that the classrooms aren't as full as they used to be and being so preoccupied with wanting them full that the discipling has not been done in a way that has really grown up disciples of Jesus. Jennifer Horton Motter and I unveiled at this time last year the scope and sequence plan for intentional discipleship from birth through high school graduation that we are implementing in the church. And this plan has been implemented in stages. Our high school Sunday school class started their new curriculum this summer with Mark Vandermeid and Dwayne McCoskey leading. If you want to know what that experience was like, please ask them. Right now, Virginia McQuistian is leading a 12-week unit on social justice, the curriculum for which Jennifer has composed herself, because other churches are, and I don't just mean United Methodist, we search everything for good stuff, but other churches are not doing this enough to have any prepared curriculum out there. So we're, we are building the bridge as we walk across it with this one. And our fourth, fifth, sixth grade class has just started their new curriculum in, in the last few weeks. It looks like a really excellent curriculum. It's called Connect. And what it does is it integrates in each lesson different parts of the Bible. So students are making connections truly in their discipleship hour. For more questions on that curriculum, you can ask Debbie Vandermeid and Helen Kershaw, who are leading those children. Our first, second, and third grade class, their new curriculum is called Whirl. And from the feedback I've heard, it's going pretty well. And the ones who could give you a little more feedback would be Allison Griffith and Linda Brown. Now, the saddest reality that Jennifer and I noticed as we committed ourselves to being intentional about our discipleship path for our children is that quality curriculum that doesn't just fill time is almost non-existent. And I do have a high bar for what I consider discipleship. I came from a church that discipled well and produced three female clergy in the span of about 20 years, and not many churches of a very, you know, smaller size can, can brag about that. But we noticed that there just isn't stuff out there. What Cokesbury, the United Publishing House, produces is not enough. I mean, our teachers were asking for stuff that was deeper and better and more. And this is related to that question that looms large, not just here, but in most local churches. Why aren't younger generations in the church? Have you asked that question? I believe that for too many decades, most, if not all, U.S. churches got too caught up in buildings and butts and bucks and forgot to really do our mandate. Again, it's not an accusation. I believe at this point that I'm just stating a fact. And it is absolutely not just this church. It is true from sea to shining sea. But here at Decatur First, we are not just going to do better. We aren't wringing our hands and saying, woe is me. We're already doing better. Though while we have implemented our intentional discipleship plan for first grade through graduation, we do have some areas we're still building up. We need to work on how we provide a really stable nursery and pre-K kindergarten room, but we just don't have enough background checked committed adults yet. And in that area, I ask for you to pray. And I don't mean just pray about if you can be involved. I know that getting down and crawling around with kids in the nursery, not in some of your future life plans. But I mean, pray for the God who can bring calm to chaos. Pray for the God of miracles, God Almighty, to provide what we need for the future as we are faithful with what we have in the present. I have seen God do amazing things, and I believe that what God wants to do is still very much being written and prepared, and our work right now is to be really attentive to that. So pray, maybe even beg God for inspiration and dedication. Because friends, I'm with much love, I say, I do not need any more advice. The things that used to work, and I love you who are chuckling at that, I appreciate it, because I'm, I'm not really trying to be, be obtuse up here, but we, Jennifer and I, have tried it all. Everything that folks have already come and said, well, did you do this? Well, yeah, we did. It is a different day. And so we need a movement of God. And it's going to be an adventure moving forward together as God moves us. But I want to really drive home that we already have a firm foundation upon which to build the future at first. We are a church full of dearly beloveds. 
That's you, beloveds, right? We are full of beloveds who care about the people that you've known since God was a child or any visitors who even just came into this place for the first time this morning. We are a church that embodies love all the time in person, mails love in greeting cards, speaks love in prayers, sends love through our support of community ministries and organization, and plays love in music that is for God's glory and to bring people nearer to God. But if we do not disciple others, then that love dies when we do. The future at first depends on our cooperation with God and each other. Our God who makes all things new. Jesus who teaches us not to put new wine into old wineskins. The Holy Spirit who grants us wisdom. And so friends, we are poised for a beautiful future. And I would now just ask you to be in an attitude of prayer. Loving God, guide us, convict us, move us, encourage us, and let us know what we need to know as we increase our intentional actions as this local church body. Amen. And I know church is running long today. There is refreshments following and no Sunday schools, so I don't think we have to be in a rush um, because we still have Bibles to present, communion to receive, and one more song to sing. So if you need to leave because you have a a lunch date or something, I understand. But since it's already 10 o'clock, I wanted to just navigate with you that we do have a little more to do. So now, as part of our focus on intentional discipleship, we are adjusting when we present Bibles from Decatur First to our students. The specific Bibles they will receive reflects their reading level as well as the curriculum used during their discipleship hour. So students, from here on out, uh, for the near future, unless the plan changes again, Um, Students in first grade will receive a copy of the Common English Bible, which will be used in our first through third grade class. Students in fourth grade will receive a New Revised Standard Version Bible, which will be used in that fourth through sixth grade class, as well as it'll be used beyond into the seventh and eighth grades. High school freshmen will receive a parallel study Bible, which will be used in our high school class. And so now I'm going to invite anyone who is present. I know a lot of families couldn't be present today, but those of you who are present, come up front. When I hand you your Bible, please remain standing at the front because then the congregation will say a blessing. And after that, then you'll be seated. You know what? I'm going to start with my olders because I think they'll get less fidgety than my youngers. Let's see. Allie, Allie, you can make your way down. Aaron, Aaron of the high school. Parker. Littles, I love you, and you came up before your name was called, so you can just wait over there. All right, and Mason. Uh, Jimmy, you're going to be down here. All right, olders, I think I can trust you to find your name on the sticky note and grab your Bible. And family, any of you who feel like taking a picture, that is holy. That's okay if you, I mean, if you feel like you want to take a picture, that is totally fine. Um, Trevor, that Aaron isn't here. I've got Natalie and Roman, and I've got John. Jimmy. Right there. Lily, you found yours. Jada, yep, you found yours. And I've got Matthew. Yep, stay up here with me, friends. Okay. I think I've got everyone. We have a really strong representation here. I love that. And the other folks let us know that they couldn't just be here today. But now, friends, uh, church, we have a blessing. There's going to be a blessing for these young disciples, and then we're also going to bless those who teach them. So we'll just, but we'll say both of those blessings all together. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, these young disciples. Open their hearts, open their minds, open their ears, and help them to know you more through their reading and study of the scriptures. Bless, O Lord, those who teach them, 
those who build relationships with them, and those who provide the resources for their journey. Amen. Now, friends, take, you can take your Bibles and go back to your seats. I will make a... It's kind of sparkly on the edge of that one, isn't there? Now, on a technical note, Pastor Amanda gets paranoid about making sure I've spelled everybody's name right, so there is a nameplate tucked in the Bible that you can then peel and stick inside your Bible. Um, and if, for some, if I've accidentally misspelled anybody's name, let me know, and we will get you a corrected one. And friends who received this Connect Bible, because of the curriculum, we leave these in the classroom because you write in them and do all that kind of good stuff during, during Sunday school. All right. Now let us prepare to receive communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, if you care to receive in the pews, you know, you have the cups 
that you could grab on your way in. And so do receive the body and the blood of Christ given for you. Those of you who would like to receive by intinction, Dwayne and I will be up here to serve you. I'm going to mix it up and ask you to do the bread today. I know, we're living large. All right, then touch it to fish. Good job.
And now, as you are able, let us stand together and sing Be Thou My Vision, number 451. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please join us for treats after the postlude. Mm -hmm. 